What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are at Woodcraft in Las Vegas and we're gonna give you five tips on how to choose boards to carve when you've never worked with any of them. So when you come to a place like Woodcraft or a lumber mill or something like that, there's a lot of different types of woods and it can be kind of intimidating, especially if you're spending some money on them. You don't know how they're going to carve. But there's definitely some clues you can look for that'll help you make a better decision. All right, so first things first, guys. If I can, I'm going to always pick a soft wood over a hardwood. That is just easier on the bits. It's easier on you. So of all the woods we have here, if I was going to pick one that would be my priority, I'd probably pick this Spanish cedar. Definitely a soft wood as compared to some of these. We've got so many different woods here. But one thing that might be a great thing to do is print out a Jenka scale. That's a scale that you can just Google and you can find it and it basically rates hardness and density and even workability of a lot of different kinds of woods. That's a great handy tool to have. One thing that you really want to pay attention to when you pick up a board and you don't know what it is, the denseness, the heaviness of it. The heaviness will give you a clue as to how it may carve. It's not always deal breaker, but the heavier, the tougher it's going to carve, the tougher it's going to be on you, and the tougher it's going to be on your router bits. So if you are using hard material, definitely don't go more than an eighth of an inch, maximum of three sixteenths of an inch at a time. So now let's talk a little bit about the grain. So I'm going to pick flat grain over vertical grain. What that's going to do is it allow you to have a better flow of that router bit through the wood and not be so kind of hard soft, hard soft. If I have a choice, I'm always going to pick flat grain over vertical grain. So let's talk a little bit about spalting. We've carved several different things in the last couple years that are spalted. It looks absolutely spectacular, especially with a finish on it. The thing that you got to remember is spalting is basically the wood is starting to rot. And what happens is that becomes much softer than the wood around it where it's not spalted. So you may have a combination of a hard and a soft. So you've got a really big difference between the soft and the hard. So that's something to definitely take into account. Another thing you really want to look for is defects in the board. Whether it could be knots or holes in the board, splits, warping, cupping, there's a lot of different things that can go wrong when you're picking a board. Now for me personally, I love the look of knots in a sign. I think it looks really cool, but that makes it a lot harder to carve and also, you're taking a risk of chipping inside that knot. So that's definitely something you want to look for. So now some defects might really add to the board. Like if you have a hole in there and you want to fill it with resin or a split and you want to use Starbond or something to give it a different look. But you want to make sure that whatever you're going to carve is going to fit in between those knots and holes or splits. So definitely take that into account because if you just get something that you plan on filling, Maybe it's not going to fit, maybe it's going to look weird the way it's laid out and something's carved that you didn't intend to carve. You want to have a decent idea of what you want the sign to say before you get the board. Okay, another thing to really consider is the price. Even in a store like this, you've got a huge range of varieties of prices from $7 a foot to and almost unlimited. One thing to take into account is if you can get a little scrap piece, if you've never carved this kind of wood before, and maybe the store or the place that you're buying from maybe has some little scrap pieces, you don't need much more than six inches by six inches. That will tell you how that's gonna carve before you spend a bunch of money on a big board, kind of try it out if you can and figure out how it's going to carve. You have to remember the tougher the board is, the tougher it's going to be on your router bits and wear and tear. It's going to be tougher on you as well, but especially the router bits. Now, if you're like us, we sharpen our own router bits, so that's not a big deal for us. But for you, if you don't sharpen your own router bits, you got to take that into account 
that you want to have plenty of sharp router bits. Now again, we sharpen router bits. We have the premium membership, the executive membership, where we'll sharpen router bits if you got them from us. We'll sharpen those for free, and we can talk about that further. If you have any questions, let me know. But you definitely want to have enough router bits that will get you through that sign, because the harder it is, the, the shorter life you're going to have on that edge on that router bit. If you're doing a commission job for somebody and it's a pretty good sized board, you want to kind of know where your price is and you want to factor in the price of that board in your quote. Now many times if it is an exotic piece of wood, you might want to just add that on, charge for a certain amount for the sign, but then add the price of that board on, especially if the customer is requesting a specific type of wood like they want Wangi or Paduk or Bacote or one of those that is really high priced. You can carve that stuff, but you gotta take into account all of these extra factors that come into play when you're dealing with an exotic that's super hard. The last thing you wanna really take into account is the color of the board and what it's used for. So like, let's say you're making a ranch sign. The customer wants people to see it as they're coming up the driveway or whatever. If you're getting a dark wood, like say a walnut or Peruvian walnut or mahogany, there's not gonna be as big of a contrast between your carving and the board. So maybe somebody will be able to see it from farther ways away. A lighter board is easier to see. Now there's ways around that. One is hand painting it white and doing a different color than the color of the board but it's just something to keep in mind. Now, there's some weirdos out there that want a beautiful hand-carved wooden sign out of exotic wood, and then they're gonna paint the whole thing green. That's their choice, it's their sign. But if, they're, if it's gonna be painted, then it doesn't really matter the color of the board if they're gonna paint everything. Like for instance, the doctor signs we did. I'll put a link right up here and you can check that out. We did that whole job out of MDF because the whole thing was gonna get painted. So there was really no point in spending a lot of money on a beautiful board with nice grain and all that stuff. MDF works great, it's exterior. So if they're gonna paint the whole thing, don't worry too much about the color of the board. All right, there you go, guys. That's some tips for you on how to pick out boards that we think will carve well. It can be kind of intimidating walking in, seeing all this stuff, but these are five tips that really will give you clues into how that particular board is gonna carve. Yep, yep, but always, the, the general rule, if you can get a little scrap piece of any piece that you're thinking about, definitely do that. Uh, that way you're not going into this thing blind. So thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate it. Uh, again, if you have any questions, Eric at makeawoodsign.com or Ryan at makeawoodsign.com and thank you to Woodcraft for letting us come and film in here and do a class. Yeah, we just, awesome. we just taught a class. We'll be doing more of those. So if you guys have questions, let us know. Mm -hmm. Thanks again for watching, guys. We love you. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.